fans, be sure to look for the region's tip next week at the Texas A&M and Ole Miss game to be SEC great. Jake Gibb, test your skills at our football throw and pose with the SEC championship trophy, courtesy of Regents, official bank of the SEC. That is a head scratcher, isn't it? Yeah. One Heisman Trophy winner in school history. And as much success as this program has had. Give Drake a while. You keep feeding him the ball and he gets closer with the carries. He orients his way towards 51 himself. Well, Drake did have that 23 yard touchdown reception a moment ago. Charleston Fowler in it running back now. Incomplete. His first miss of the afternoon. He is now 12 out of 13, 137 with three touchdowns. Looking for OJ Howard. It's just amazing the accuracy of which he completes passes. Last week against Ole Miss, he was 78% for that game. I mean, that is doing it. And he is a 67% passer or completion percentage for his career at, o at, uh, at Alabama. Territory giving 13 on that carry, and that'll be a first down. Joseph Peterson brings him down. Yeah, he's kind of an H back type, but they'll line him up, give him some carries and tailback. And just watch this nice edge block there. And I'm gonna just split two guys, run over two more, and pick up the first down. That's 6'1, 250 pounds coming at you. Came in with 14 carries, 57 yards on the season. Stay in the line as the tailback. They'll fake it to Jostin and go through the air. Little pitch and catch. Kevin Norwood on the reception. That'll be just shy of the first down. Give him nine. Brent McClendon, the senior corner out of Atlanta. <laughs> Well, the last couple of completions by McCarron, you, know, you can't question his arm strength. That that pass right there all the way across the field on an out route is right on time and where the receiver can catch it. Then another one as he's rolling out, just so accurate with the football. Kenny Bell will make a move, and he does. Down to the 22-yard line. Arrington Jordan pushes him down. A gain of 19, and the numbers are just piling up for McCarron. Boy, nice. Just kind of shook Brent McClendon at the top right here. Playmaker in space one-on-one, -on -one. and McClendon doesn't get a, a hand on him. It's another defender that comes from inside out, and I asked Doug Nussmeyer, you know, describe Kenny Bell, and he says he's a guy that can just really take the top off a of defense. Excellent speed receiver. Averaging almost 20 yards per catch in his career. The 21. Carrying the throw it again. Underneath one to Kevin Norwood. Have a pass interference on the back end. There's a flag down. Well, you talk about this Alabama receiving core, Andre, and there is no doubt this could be one of the best they've ever had here in terms of depth and talent. I mean, and we haven't even talked about Amari Cooper. That's exactly. That's I mean, my point. might we be the, the best of the bunch. Coming off a 68 reception season last year and 11 touchdowns. During the pass, before the pass is thrown, holding on the defense, number 39. That's 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Amari, nine catches on the year, on the field. And we, we talked to Coach Saban about it. And, you know, where is Amari? He's been a little banged up. But he says, you know, he's also got to get right at practice. Yeah. He had a, you know, at that position, this time of the year, they're going to be nagging injuries, leg injury, whatever it is. You got to play through it and f somehow fight through it. But he is a big target. 
and a guy that knows what to do with the football. And there's so many weapons, as you mentioned, at that position of receiver as well as the backs they have. And the best in the country under center and A.J. McCarron. set up a first and goal. Let's see where they end up spotting this football. It will be first down and goal from the one. Gerald Robinson got through early. And got him down low around the ankles. Kind of tripped him up. And a couple of other Georgia State defenders stop him from getting into the end zone. Trent Miles wants a timeout for his Panthers. 6.15 to go in the second quarter. Alabama looking to stretch this out to 35. One more week. We heard you, mate. So we're adding one more week of unlimited scampi, buffalo, or twisty battered shrimp. Try them all with our signature sirloin plus a side for just $14.99. But unlimited shrimp is only... different places in this in this Alabama offense and he still can make plays. One after is up and good. Busy day so far for Kate Foster. 6-11 to go in the second quarter. 35-0. AJ McCarron is having an unbelievable afternoon. 15 out of 16 for 166. Only one incompletion. That one was close. But a touchdown pass to Christian Jones. He comes back to DeAndre White. Scrambling around, making plays on the move. Hitting Kenyon Drake. He gets into the end zone for the third touchdown pass. And then here, number four, the Jalston Fowler. Nice touch pass. And what I like about that is he's thrown with... You know, all the ways that you ask a quarterback to do it. With touch, he's had to drill some shots, and, you know, on the move. The guy can, he can play, he can play. He plays the position, he understands it, and he takes care of the football. That's what I like, but stand on the right. No interceptions. The four touchdown passes without an interception. Well, obviously, A.J. McCarron came in with three interceptions this year, matching his total last year. He had 30 touchdowns, three interceptions, but it looks like A.J. might be getting that uh, that feel back. Nothing. That's something that he ordinarily does. That feel back. Not that he ever lost it, but his numbers are just sick off the charts over his career, and he continues to play well. And, you know, when you talk to the coaches, you asked him yesterday, where is he better? He says he just understands the game a little bit better. Yeah, you know, I asked him. I got a chance. I was working out, and he came in. We visited. Just kind of quarterback to quarterback talking, and not something that he ordinarily does, but we start talking about it. I said, hey, did you expect this much success at Alabama? And, and he said, not in my wildest dreams when I got here. I was competing for this job. And lo and behold, a couple of years later, he's a two-time national championship winning quarterback. And you just see the cool and the calmness. When I, when I got to spend that time with him here at Alabama's new weight room, it was just, you know, invaluable. 
Well, you and I were here a couple of years ago doing the spring game, and he was battling that for that job. And you and I walked away from that spring game saying that, in our, from our vantage point, it was his job. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just looked like he was the guy in control, and boy, he took the reins, and it hasn't looked back. Yeah, he looked like he understood the system. And now you're three years from that, and and. Uh, a guy that really controls, he's the face of this program. I mean, he had to bide his time, and some really good football players were here before him, but this is A.J. McCarron's team. 29-2 is a starter. Ronnie Bell looks like he's going up top. Just off the fingertips of Robert Davis, that true fre freshman wide receiver. But McCarron in the last drive, showing you all kinds of different throws, and he's also showing you how to coach him up. Yeah, that's a true freshman right there, the tight end, O.J. Howard. So he's telling him on the back shoulder throw. That's the one incompletion that he's had all day. Hey, I'm trying to explain to you exactly where I'm going to stop you with the football on your back shoulder. Just kind of giving him some, some advice on how to execute that play. You know, you take away that first game against Virginia Tech, which is hard to do. He actually played the game, but he was 10 of 23 in that game against Virginia Tech. Since then, he's completed passes at almost 80% this season. Yes, E.J. Mosley steps up in the hole. That'll be a loss of three for Travis Evans and the Panthers. Yeah, he's a good one. You turn the film on in Mosley, you see 32 just flying around for this defense. Five tackles already in this game. Beats the block up front and then gets makes his way to the ball carrier, but boy, he does it. He plays with speed. He knows this defense. Can get him in and out of certain situations. Smart player, and he's just gifted athletically. His dad is shipyard supervisor down in Mobile. His mom a school teacher. Comes from a foundation where you don't brag a lot, you just go do it. Yep. He can go in to do it. Get some help in the secondary. Landon Collins, the sophomore, coming up from that safety spot. I have talked a lot about Haha -Ha Clinton Dix today and what his absence will mean. Coming off a career high 14 total tackles last week against Ole Miss, suspended this week. Guys like Landon Collins and Eddie Jackson, Geno Smith, going to have to play well until Haha -Ha gets back to the lineup if that's the case. Suspended indef uh, indefinitely for taking what's been reported as some uh, impermissible benefits from an assistant coach who has been put on administrative leave. Yeah, and he, you know, he's by nature a, a strong safety, having to move over and play free safety. And he played that little screen pass just the right. You got to split the blocks and then make the tackle when you get there. And that's exactly what Collins did. 426 to go in the second quarter. Alabama doing what number one teams do. And that is Put up points on the board. 35 nothing. Touchdowns, no picks. He's down 10 touchdowns on the year, three interceptions, but boy, he looked very, very sharp. All his passes right on the money. And now Blake Sims will take over under center. The junior out of Gainesville, Georgia. Outstanding athlete. There's Drake. He gets to midfield and it's good up there. That's just like how, how hard he runs. Blake is Blake Sims. season didn't get any snaps last week but the guy when you watch him during warm-ups and I knew he would get some time today I wanted to take a good look at him he's just he throws the ball with confidence and I think that's what you're going to see here while he's in the football game he just throws it with confidence knows where to go with the football Watch here, a little quick, quick slant route. 
out to Norwood and boy, these guys, this receiving court, Dave, they know what to do with the football when they get it in their hands. Turn stops, pursuit coming from inside, reverses field, gets back outside to give himself a chance to pick up additional yards. some time today and you watch the athletic ability of Kenyon Drake that's full speed and a spin that's video game type stuff so Drake will head back to the sidelines already has a touchdown reception and D Hart the check in the sophomore out of Orlando Florida the lineup 5 foot 9 185 pounds dancing around a flag down the line of scrimmage as Hart was shy of the first down or the goal line. Kite Dallas tripped him up. False start on the offense, number eight, five yard penalty. Good night, first down. First to number 58, number 58. Slid 64 <laughs> at right tackle. Grant Hill. A little bit early. Grant, another one of those true freshmen out of Huntsville, Alabama. Rated the number one offensive guard coming out of high school by ESPN Recruiting. Boy, yeah, this half there between Sims and D. Hart. D loses a few yards, and now they're back outside the 10-yard line. It's going to give Blake Sims a little more room. There you go. For his first touchdown pass of the season. Actually, he's got one. His second touchdown pass of the season. Watch this tight end on the back side here. Another flag. This is the kind of thing that's going to get Coach Sam fuming. Offense, number 50, five yard penalty, and then second half. Yeah, yeah, they, these guys, Alphonse Taylor, is a guy that jumps the right guard. If they don't get it together, you'll see the other, the first team go back in. Try to give you an opportunity to get some snaps and quality and quality snaps in a game. And this is what he's talking about yeah. to us about we can't have these negative plays. And once again, they had 14 last week and they got to cut that out. He said he'd like to have none, but on average, you might have two or three per game. Here's D. Hawk. That's a stutter step. Big shift tackle at the 15 of Kai Dallas, a true freshman of Lithonia, Georgia. No gain on the play. And Kai Dallas was a three star prospect out of high school. He had 95 tackles his senior year, so he knows how to. Make his way to the football and then stay wrapped up right there, just fighting and holding on to D. Hart. Four tackles in the game so far for the true freshman, Kai Dallas. We were talking to the coaches a little bit about D. Hart yesterday and what his role is. Hadn't seen a whole lot of D. A couple of knee surgeries. Trying to fight his way back, but mainly just a third down guy. Yeah. Here is third down. That's him. Plenty of time to throw, but now flushed out of the pocket. The guy who played some running back back in 2011. Showing you some of that footwork. Picks up six on the play, but that'll bring up a fourth down. And here comes the field goal unit, led by Cade Foster. They just couldn't get to the first down marker. You see the quickness of why he has that running back background. He turned that corner. He put lower the shoulder and, and hit the... The speed button almost picked up the first, almost got to the first down mark. Twenty-seven yard attempt for Foster. And he will split the uprights. He's now five out of six on the year. And Alabama now leads it thirty-eight to nothing. Well, coming up. The ceasefire halftime report. Ole Miss back in action after being blanked last weekend against Alabama. Always Florida and Arkansas. Interesting matchup there. You got the 
Very talented running back combination of Arkansas against a defense that has been on lockdown for the Florida Gators. But Florida having so many troubles, so many troubles trying to score that's, points. That's a big game for Arkansas. They are going to murder's row on their schedule. And if they can somehow hold on, and we'll see the Hogs next week against South Carolina. But uh, that's a big get if they're able to knock off the Florida Gators who playing without Jeff Driscoll in this one. There it is next week. You see upper right on your screen, South Carolina, Arkansas. That will be a very interesting matchup in Fayetteville. I think Brett Bielema is the man to get Arkansas redirected. Loves that power football, big backs, big, big offensive line, solid defense. That's how that program is going to be built. Just 36 seconds to go before halftime. We'll kick it off. Now we'll save a couple of yards deep. And now Albert Wilson's got to bring it out. He's an explosive player. But New Alabama, an opportunity to get their coverage team down. Going to be a hard time. Not a bad return considering the, the hesitation and he had last time these two teams met. Had a 97-yard touchdown on a kick return. Didn't know if he wanted to bring it out. All of a sudden, you take the step out of the end zone. You have to bring it out. Today's first and ten line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Looks like Georgia State will just take this one to the locker room. They line up in an odd formation, usually a four receiver set. And Jefferson, the fullback, on that carry. seconds to go. Great first half for A.J. McCarron. Crazy numbers. McCarron goes 15 of 16, 166 and four touchdowns. Outstanding catch by DeAndre White in the corner of the end zone. Highlights those receptions from McCarron and company. The number one team in America looking at all of that with a 38 point first half. And for the Crimson Tide, they put up 308 yards of offense. They hold Georgia State to 41. Let's go down to Kara. Coach, offensive execution under A.J. McCarron, very solid. That second unit got in there, and I saw you coaching a lot. What was your message to that group? Well, we had two penalties, and we had the ball in the five-yard line, and you know, our quarterback doesn't have the cadence right, and the guy's got to play with points. So, you know, but this is a good time for him to get some experience in the learn. Overall, the expectation of seeing better translation of what you're practicing to the game, how have they improved today? Well, I think we did a lot better job of executing. I mean, obviously, you know, our players, you know, outmatch them a little bit, but it's really about us, and uh, I've been pleased with the way we've executed. We messed up a couple of third downs on defense, but all in all, it was a pretty good half. Thanks, Coach. Dave? Thanks, Kara. Coach pleased with 38 points in the first half for a team that came in averaging 35 points a contest. Yeah, 38. That's the number they averaged a year ago on their way to a national championship. Time for the C Spire Halftime Report. Dari, Kevin, guys. All right, thank you much. No problem for Alabama as expected. 38 nothing. McCarron, 15 of 16. If he doesn't play again, as we welcome you into the C Spire Halftime Report, if his day is done, that completion percentage of 94% would be a school record. A Georgia State, 41 yards of offense. 40 yards in penalties, Alabama over 300 yards of offense. What do we think was going to happen? Well, between last <laughs> week, this week, and next weekend versus Kentucky, Alabama's doing pretty well. They're looking like they're having these tune-up games to kind of help themselves along in the season, and that's exactly kind of what this game is turning into as we see the the uh, discrepancy and total yardage on either side, but Bama's executing executing the way that they want to be executing, and yeah. and when you know Nick Saban says this all feeds into the whole BCS era that sh we're still in this year. Are we finished with AJ McCarron today? And other be. Alabama starters probably should be. We will see. We of course won't know uh, until we get into quarter number three. SEC games on the schedule still. Are you already? Yeah. 
Okay, I'm just now I'm recording on the I'm recording on the uh, thing so I can cut it up. Some guy called you just wanted to know what he said. Was Rank going through the game? I just wanted to tell you that. Who's that? Huh? Who's that? Uh -huh. For success there. Issues for Georgia State getting the right personnel on the field. I am going to see Trent Miles upset. There it is, having to take a timeout just to get the right personnel. Well, we'll take it with Coach Miles and the Panthers back in a moment. affecting this game. He's a playmaker. Hadn't really touched the ball, but still making his mark on the football game. Well, that was C.J. Mosley leaving the field. Looked like he got banged up. That's big news for the Crimson Tide and their fans. They're a leader on this team. Little play action here. Bell, no way to go. Gets the chase him down, and he just throws it. Yeah, this is going to be a... Yeah, didn't get past the line of scrimmage. Pretty obvious intentional grounding penalty here. Line well, of scrimmage is at the 35. Let's go back, Andre, and look at that last play. See what happened to 32 in Crimson. Yeah, keep his uh, keep your eyes on 32 working out. He recognizes formation in the play, and that's where Wilson just chips him off and stops him from making the tackle on Jefferson, the fullback. But right there, just a nice chip block. It's nothing wrong, nothing illegal about that block. He is up and moving around on the sideline, which is a good sign for Alabama. Bell, with a shoulder fake going up top to his big play guy. Albert Wilson makes the catch. Wilson, the senior receiver, holds just about every record for Georgia State in short history. Picks up 34 yards. You know, we don't pick these impact players by accident. This guy's a playmaker. And a lot of NFL scouts are looking at him at Jacksonville State, excuse me, at uh, Georgia State. They like his side. They think he can play slot receiver on the next level. He is a good football player. 5'9", 200 pounds senior. What's that loose for? Yeah, 
side. Here goes Evans, nowhere to run. Double yards, maybe, when it's all said and done. Nice double move that the play It's thrown a little bit earlier with less air, and he doesn't have to wait on it. It's a foot race between he and Vinny Sonsuri. Well, Wilson has scored 19 touchdowns in his career, and the average touchdown covers 46 yards per game. Kelton Hill now in the Wildcat formation, the former quarterback, taking a snap, but he'll hand it off to Travis Evans for a game of yard. Go back to that. His average touchdown, Albert Wilson, his average touchdown covers 41 yards or 46 yards. <laughs> That's crazy. He has receptions in his career for 93, 84, 78, 75 yards. And over his career, he's averaged 19.6 per reception. First year in the FBS level, first year in the Sun Belt, and he's already in his preseason, you know, second team preseason all Sun Belt. That's, you know, that's, you turn on the film, the guy just flashes. Alabama's done a pretty good job keeping him in check this afternoon. Good motion out of the slot. Bell just throws it up for grabs on the slot. Hoping that Wilson could come up with the play, but Wilson hit the deck. You see the play he tried to make? He wanted to tip the ball back inside. They had two other defenders or teammates there for the interception. And that's what he's talking about. Watch him here. He goes up. He can't. He knows he's not going to come back in bounds, but he's trying to tip it back inside. So maybe one of his his players, Bradley Slive, Selby. I'm sorry. He he uh, he's so he could come up with the interception. So a 53-yard attempt for Will Lux. His longest year is 39. Did he get it through? Yes, he did. New career long for Will Lux, a sophomore out of Noonan, Georgia. Had no attempts from the in field goals in the first three contests. All of his attempts came last week against Jacksonville State. But not so a 53-yarder. Defensive linemen, wide receivers, Mark Barron, running backs. Mark Barron actually here today, watching the Crimson Tide on homecoming Sims. Continues to work at quarterback. That pass is deflected. They'll have their they'll have a quarterback join that group and A.J. McCarron after this season. How about 63 SEC players drafted last year? 35 of the 63 on the defensive side of the ball. <laughs> What the conference has somewhat built its reputation on. This year, however, they're changing out. Maybe all those defensive players that you drafted last year has allowed these offenses to produce some pretty good numbers. Here's Sims. Can tell if he was looking for Harrison Jones or was he trying to hit Kenny Bell in that middle of the middle ground area? Harrison Jones. Tight end. Barrett 
Jones' younger brother. Versatile player in his own right. His brother, his older brother, played all, of, all up and down that offensive line. Senior year played center. Moved inside from tackle to center. Really helped to solidify that. That offensive line last season. Seems to throw it on third down and the pass is caught. Looks like it was bobbled a bit, but held on to by Harrison Jones. That's a gain of 12, and that'll move the chains. Tell you, I like the body language of Blake Sims. He knows the offense. He's confident in his arm strength and where to go with the football. He just delivers it. Once he commits to it, oh, he, he doesn't have a, a string on him where he's pulling it back. He, he delivers the football on time. Six as that one goes 
to face Sean again. Imagine that, 12,000. It was a uh, high school rushing record that stood for 51 years. There's a look at 27 Chains numbers this week. Was wearing number three. A couple of guys actually changed numbers. situation. Georgia Southern, or excuse me, Georgia State 0-4, looking for their first win as an FBS team coming here to Alabama. Probably not the best place to do that. So Griffith will kick off. Kate Foster getting some rest after Alabama's touchdown. Went 10 plays, 68 yards, 5 minutes off the clock, and the 10-yard touchdown pass from Sims to Black makes it 45-3. So the kick will settle in at about the goal line. Maybe another block in the back against Georgia State, which they have had problems with field position. Yeah, let's let our referee today with the call. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 31 on the return team, half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, perfect opportunity to bring in a guy that used to wear that striped shirt with the R on it. The coordinator of SEC officials uh, joining us now, Steve. The number of targeting fouls are down per game. Last year we had one in every eight games. This year it's one in every ten games, even with the additional emphasis. Strong for grabs up around the 34. Who's got it? Well, I tell you, both the receiver and the corner to that side fighting for the football. Robert Davis is the receiver. I think they're going to award it to, to Robert Davis with a catch and a first down here. Bradley Silk. Bradley Silk with the coverage for Alabama. Take a look at this. And tie goes to the receiver here, Steve. It does. And uh, Bobby Moreau right there making this ball a great position. Looking in. And uh, tough call. <laughs> I'm going to go with Bobby Moreau. There you go. He's staying, I always say that. I'm standing a quarter mile away. He's standing three feet next to it. Go with the guy who's close to it. Georgia State will take it on first down and 10. And that pass a little bit low, and we'll say the catch is made. Back to the targeting rule and, and, and how it's played out for you. Um, it's not your... Very good job with it. 
and, and on those outside occasions where it wasn't there, replay is the back. Could have been a, a personal foul, unnecessary roughness. So they're only looking at the targeting component in terms of the disqualification. And if they see there was no contact to the head or there was no targeting, then they can put the player back in the game. But the 15 yard penalty. lose that playing time and and we've seen where players would have maybe taken a shot uh back off or at least go in with a shoulder and go low i mean that's what we really talk to them about really three things uh number one see what you hit heads up tap yard penalty off. I think there'll be a lot of discussion on it. And, and ultimately, it'll be a vote by the coaches because right. people always point at the officials, yeah, but, <laughs> but the coaches are the only ones that get a vote in the rules committee. How about maybe the severity of the penalty for the player? Topic, the red button, if you will, it's in people's discussion. Um, do you see foresee any changes in how we approach that? Not only call it on the field, but handle it in the booth. Well, the actual 15-yard penalty as well. And we don't want the guy in the booth refereeing the game from right. the booth. But I think that'll get a lot of discussion in the offseason of should we on discussion on it. And, and ultimately, it'll be a vote by the coaches because right. people always point at the officials. Yeah, but, <laughs> but the coaches are the only ones that get a vote in the rules committee. How about maybe the severity of the penalty for the player rather than missing? And we don't want the guy in the booth refereeing the game from right. the booth. But I think that'll get a lot of discussion in the offseason of should we, on, on a foul that is only a targeting foul, and if we take that away, you know, should we take the 15-yard penalty off? I think there'll be a lot of discussion on it. And, and ultimately, it'll be a vote by the coaches because right. people always point at the officials. Yeah, but, <laughs> but the coaches are the only ones that get a vote in the rules committee. How about maybe the severity of the penalty for the player rather than missing a half of football, maybe take away a quarter, and then if it's a second violation by that same player, then you go to, you know, beyond that. I, you know, I, I don't think anything is off the table when it comes to player safety, but I think the impact of the foul today is, is pretty is pretty uh, dramatic for the player, and I think that's what's caught their attention, and that's what's changing player behavior, and we needed that to happen. Yeah, I think uh, somebody watches a lot of football games here, and you can do nothing else watching a player lay on the field, not move, and you don't know what the situation is, so anything we can do to avoid those particular situations, I think it's better for football in general. Absolutely, and like I said, that's the goal. When, when fans get upset about the rule, think about right. what the background is, right. and it's player safety, yeah. and it's a good thing. And like I said, we're making progress. The, the fouls are down on that in, in a year where you would have thought with all the emphasis yeah. they would go up. So that means the players are getting it, and uh, and, and I think as, as we continue to learn and grow with it, it'll get better and better. Well, Steve, uh, thanks so much for spending some time with us. I know fans out there would like to hear about how this – is being enforced, how it's kind of evolved in the first month, and uh, I know you got to get back to the control center, back to the SEC offices. We but thanks for joining us. Always great to see you. I miss you. I miss you down there on the field. I miss you in the stripes and stuff. Got to get you back out. Well, you know, I, I miss being out there, but but I really love the job, and, and hopefully we're making a difference and still working. And uh, so you know that's why I'm here today, watching these guys work, and then uh, we'll be in the command center tonight. All right, tell us about. We said hello. I will do it. All right, Steve. Thanks so much, buddy. Great to be with you. down for the Crimson Tide over the 45, six yard pickup. Now go to Parker Baradu. Heard about a guy that's taking advantage of some playing time, Blake Sims. He looks sharp. Getting the ball out on time. That's what you do as a quarterback. Manage the game. That's not a bad turn. We talked to 
no statement about that. You have to be able to manage the game at all times, know the down and distance, where to go with the football, snap count. There's a pressure coming here, though, and you see the footwork from Sims, and he converts that pass for close to a first down. Let's see where they spot. They'll actually spot him right beyond the line. That should be good enough. That goes to Kirk Freitag. It's a nice helmet tap for Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator. This shows you the athletic ability of Blake Sims. Watch him get outside the pocket. He outruns Tavares Batiste and then throws a nice strike to the outside. That is, that's doing it at a high level. Sims, by the way, Andre, how about this? He's now 10 out of 12 for 116 and a touchdown. That's following McCarron's 15 out of 16. Amazing stuff. This was stopped the play. It's the fourth and a half. Ball start. Offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty. First down. It was uh, nice to talk to Steve Shaw yeah. just a few minutes. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think he kept hitting on the fact that, you know, it's he, as much as you might not agree with the call, it's all about player safety. And I think we've seen week one there was some confusion, maybe even a little bit in week two down the road. But I think with each game that's played, I think not only the officials, the players, the fans, all kind of are starting to get a little bit closer to being on the same page in that regard. Derrick Henry, the true freshman out of Uly, Florida, the young man you were speaking of. He'll pick up 16 yards, brought down by Nate Anthony. 12,124 career high school rushing yards for Derrick Henry. There goes Henry again. He's inside the 20, the young man. Big physical back. I mentioned the fact last year he had a game where he rushed for 510 yards. It might have been more than I threw for my senior year in high school. Swing it out to the far side. Inside the 15 down to the 13 yard line, a gain of three. Ty Reed on that reception. But here's the number that stands out to me about Derrick Henry. He averaged 327 yards a game rushing and almost 10 yards every time he took the football. Three quarters are in the books. Alabama's in control. 45-3, and they're knocking on the door. There are times when you need things to move fast. So why go with a wireless network that asks you to hold on a minute when you can have one that says we're good to go? Just uh, took the ball and marched it at will down the throats of Georgia State. And well, the Panthers looking like uh, might be giving up some more points here as Alabama. It's second down inside the 20. What's happening there for Bounty Tenpenny, a true freshman at North Little Rock? Just one talented back after another. Then you see all the receivers that are. Chipping in, the Andrew White catching a touchdown pass. Kevin Norwood with a couple of big plays, and Chris Black electrifying this homecoming crowd here in Tuscaloosa. It's a third down. About the 12 yard line. Sims. Thought about going out. Especially at that angle, it's hard to hard to handle it. A 30-yard field goal attempt coming up. Adam Griffith. Nate Foster getting a little bit of rest. And the freshman out of New Georgia. And he will miss it. No good. Now Georgia State doesn't 
give up any points on that possession. And they'll have the football when we come back. Tuscaloosa, 1344 to go in this one. They still play LSU, and LSU plays Bama at the end of the season, so it's it's still kind of out there for those three teams. Long way from the finish line. It's a catch and run, and, and just to give yourself a chance to, to pick up the first down. So D. Hardback to return this punt. He stands at the 33 yard line. End over end, wobbly kick that hit. Go out of bounds. Let's see where they end up spotting this at the 43 yard line. Time out on the field. It's all We'll come back, look at some of the action coming up at the SEC. Studio time now for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. I mean, he's, you know, I would say this, he's just been and sick. He's going to have him in a position to challenge for the national championship, which is even more amazing. Got Clemson coming up, that should have been picked off. They complete on first down and 10, but, I, you know, first of all, it's huge data for you. One of the best football of anybody. You can maybe <laughs> maybe argue Teddy Bridgewater, yeah. but he's what he's time. doing, I mean, it's just unbelievable. In his first year, the numbers against the team. This was supposed that was supposed right. to be That's a right. heck right. of a matchup against Maryland and their their defense, but he has just owned the Terps today. Derrick Henry in at running back. There's a game coming up October. He's 19th. owned just about everybody he's played though. But uh, October 19th at Clemson, Florida State. Tigers will go at it. Of course, Florida State still needs to finish the year. I mean, but for both those teams that are, you have to say, kind of front runners for the ACC, they, you know, they finish up the regular season, you know, with their rivals. Clemson yeah. going to South Carolina, at South Carolina, against South Carolina and Florida and Florida State. So even if whoever wins that game uh, in Clemson, not going to be easy to finish out with a win. I mean, look at who they got to play. Boy, they seem to be getting better and the peak point of their season. Really, really bad time. The other game I want to watch when I get back to Atlanta, you know, my sofa is that Ole Miss Auburn game, because if you blink, you might miss a play. Two good friends going at it, you free. 
Williams, Gus Malzahn, those guys that really respected each other, started through the high school ranks, and that relationship has kind of blossomed over the years. Two guys that believe in the same type of offenses, they spend a lot of time in the offseason comparing notes, and today they're matching which There may be 90 plays on each side of the ball today in that contest. <laughs> Just thinking after Chris Black caught that ball, what a, what a game like this does it is it creates opportunities for players. And how do you go out? How do you execute? What's the coach want to see? Well, somebody today is going to earn more playing time in a significant role as the tide goes forward in their schedule. And you look at number five and the way he's operating. Once the ball is in his hands, the routes he's running, nice and crisp. How he's getting yards after the catch. He's a guy that's going to, he, he put himself on Nick Saban's radar in this one. Redshirt freshman of Jacksonville, Florida. Saw 27 jog off the field. Derrick Henry, he's a, a youngster that a lot of people were waiting to see play at this level. And he's just in a, in a tough spot this year. Obviously a ton of talent, but learning the ropes. And, you know, he didn't play in a system where he had to do a lot of different things. Here's Sims. He was basically toss right, toss left, yeah. handed right, handed left for Derrick Henry. The whole process of blocking and route running and checking off. The main thing, protecting the quarterback and pass protections. And those are things that a young back, you know, when you get to this level, you're going to have to do it, especially at a program like Alabama, it's where it's complex, a pro-type system. But uh, he's picking it up. I think once he does, you'll, I don't know if you're going to see 510 yards in a game, but he's going to be a good one. 510 yards in one game. We'd like to recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the State in the first Alabama punt of the afternoon coming up. Cody Mandel will step in. Inches to the goal line. A 46 yard punt. The Andrew White getting down to cover it for the Crimson Tide. 7 04 to go on this one back in a moment. Make one thing the ultimate driving machine. And by Geico. What's out there? Installs, Horston Bear. You're going to be pretty good when you're still here and the statue goes <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Travis Evans. They have first out. He will give him 11 on that carry. I really enjoyed our visit with him yesterday. He is such a perfectionist, yeah. but he feels like they're making the steps to get where he wants them to be. What I get is that he understands that each and every year, and we're a lot of fans, 
may not grasp this, but every team is different. Yeah. The chemistry is different, and especially on the collegiate level when you have guys leave early, seniors graduate, that's another bunch. It's a talented group, but you've got to establish the chemistry within the program again, and he's one of the best in the business at doing it. Well, he has uh, definitely worked hard despite the score. He has a quick coach, and that's for sure. A lot of guys, a lot of young guys getting into this game, and this is a great opportunity to see who can get some snaps down the road. Yeah, young players, and he's coaching them up because he knows they're going to be integral parts of this program going forward. Right there in the, in the ear of Eddie Jackson, the talented corner. Uh, he is just constantly working those guys to get better each and every snap, each and every minute that they put the uniform on. He spent a lot of time with Eddie Jackson because he knows Eddie's going to play a lot of snaps. And he knows he's a talented player. Pass is caught by Albert Wilson. He turns the corner. And let's see where they run him out of bounds at the 36. And that'll be a first down after a 14-yard pickup. Well, today's first and 10 line. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. This one. Imagine that, though, how hard that is to do. Three national yeah. championships in the last four years. And then a nice run with the SEC and their dominance. On the offense, 12 men in the huddle, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, the last team to win three consecutive national championships. we got to go back to Minnesota back in 1934, 35, and 36. Alabama searching for their third straight now. 15 total national titles for Alabama, 23 SEC titles. Jonathan John Bart in that running back alongside our new quarterback, Ben McClain. near sideline. Ben, and ben McClain and Ronnie Bell were in a heated quarterback competition coming into the season, and the coaches settled on Bell. But McClain certainly is 6'1", 210, so he's got a pretty good arm. Yeah, a little higher completion percentage as well as yet this year to throw an interception in his limited time. 6'1", 210 out of Snellville, Georgia. Brookwood High School product. It's a Brookwood powerhouse. Brookwood, I'm sorry, yeah. Powerhouse high school football program. Second down at 15 now. I'll pick up the five they lost for John Bartz. Dylan Lee down on that tackle. Well, defense for Alabama, they have led the nation in scoring D the last two years. They gave up just eight points a game in 2011, a little under 11 points a game last season. No school has done that three years in a row. Now, Alabama right now giving up 14 and a half points, but they've got Texas A&M out of the way. I think that's where the blemish is. Yeah, when you get in a game like that and you allow 40 plus you know, to win, and that throws the, the stats off just a little bit. Certainly today will help the cause for Alabama. Loss of a yard. Reggie Raglan able to make the tackle. Well, AJ McCarron didn't quite play two quarters, but the time he was on the field he certainly exhibited the right stuff today because of that he's our player of the game brought to you by academy sports and outdoors right stuff low prices every day four touchdown passes today ties his career high that is now seven times in his career he has thrown four touchdown passes in a game what was your high touchdown pass by the way in a game <laughs> i think it was six you know a little bit about what AJ's had to deal with today. He's had a lot of rest coach. He went to the second half. Yeah, it drives you crazy, actually. But you're also rooting on the other guys that put in the work and practice. D. Hart makes a nice catch of the sideline. Gets a couple of blocks. And here goes D. Hart. He's got some little bit of stickles over the midfield strike. A 51-yard punt. A 31-yard return for D. Hart. Two and a half to go.
when you find out about the DQ five buck lunch, all. There's a little more trouble there. Or it would set the alarm or sound the alarm for me a little bit more, but I don't see where they lose uh, going forward. Tornadoes for those tiebreakers will start to come into play. If LSU was able to upset Alabama, Alabama, Texas a &M. So it was a tough game with the second. And I mentioned as well, AM's not out of it. Right. Because, you know, now you've got if a and takes care of business against LSU. So you go deeper into the tiebreaker. You know, you know what will be interesting to see is, is how LSU does come out and play today. That yeah. was such a deflating loss on the road and a great game. You're just... Les Miles has been there before. I don't I don't see them taking a step back. But going to Starkville will not be an easy road at all. Most people will have the bells out. Full house. It'll be loud. The only way to silence them? Start putting up points early. Yeah. That'll be good enough for a first down. Gain of eight. So Alabama will win this one easily, not as easily as some at home would probably like. But nonetheless, it has been complete domination. 45 to 3. Alabama is uh, closing in on 500 yards of offense. They have 184 yards on the ground, 296 through the air. I think they had one maybe episode in this game where you could point to where they weren't consistent right at the end of the first half when the twos had come in the game. But aside from that, it's just been a very impressive, thorough performance, and that's even grading the number twos going forward. That uh, got a chance to play as well today for Nick Saban. A lot of guys got in, got some, got some work. The quarterback play, pretty impressive today for Nick Saban. Sims and McCarron go 29 to 34, 296, five touchdowns, no interceptions out of the quarterback position today. And Alabama goes to 5 and 0 on the year, did nothing to certainly hurt their chances at remaining number one in the country. Focus on their next opponent, Kentucky. Kara has caught up with Coach David. Coach, you felt like Alabama made some improvements in consistency against Ole Miss. You wanted to see that carry through today. How did they do? Uh, I thought they did great the first half. We got to play a lot of players in the second half. They did some good things, and there's some things they're going to learn from. So it was a good experience for us. You know, we haven't had a game where we've been able to play those guys. So I was really proud of the way our guys competed in the game today. As you mentioned, a lot of different players saw the field today. Who stood out to you? Blake Sims did a really good job of playing quarterback. You know, we wanted to play quarterback in all our system. He can run all the quarterback runs, and we wanted to see him throw the ball, which is improved on. And you know, Chris Black did a nice job, and you know, some of the defensive players did well, but we gave up some plays too. When you have different personnel in place, what challenges does that present for you? Do they know what to do? Are they going to line up right? Are they going to get, you know, execute what we do? But. That, that experience is what helps them learn, so it was a very good learning experience for them today. Thanks, Coach. Dave, let's send it back to you. All right, Karen, thank you very much. And Andre talked about Chris Black today as a guy that probably bought himself some extra snaps, and Coach just highlighted him right there. Yeah, young player who performed when they got the football to him. He did some special things. I think he ran some good crisp routes that you're looking for for an offense, you know, a player in his position. So I think he definitely he served himself well in this one. Alabama wins it 45 to 3 over Georgia State. Time for us to go to the studios. Check in with Dari and company. It's all yours. All right, guys, we will send it back to Tuscaloosa in just a bit. An easy victory for Alabama. Georgia State falls to 0 and 5. It's one of those things. You heard Kara talking to Coach Saban. How much does a coach actually take away from a game like this? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what 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 do you think that they saw that what did you see from Alabama that you said, oh, okay, all right, good? I really didn't see anything out of the ordinary. I just saw Alabama being Alabama, playing good defense, playing structured. It didn't matter who came into the game, whether it was first, second, thirds, fourth, walk-ons. They're just taught well. A.J. McCarron, school record, completion percentage, went 15 of 16 in the day. Four touchdowns, 
And no turnovers. That's a ball through that catch. How about that great catch to Andrew White there? So he played, and then Blake Sims came in. He went 14 of 18. And again, if this is one of those games, you see this every year. The SEC has a week where they all kind of beat up on a much inferior opponent, and you say at the end of it, what do you take away? And realistically, I don't know what that answer is. You don't really take anything away. These are just tune-up games. I mean, between last weekend and next weekend, the two SEC games, Ole Miss, Kentucky, this is just a game for them to sharpen their skills and get some, some younger players some playing time. A.J. McCarron had uh, the second half off, and then after the game, spoke with Kara Capuano. AJ, under your leadership, Alabama's offense today was really clicking. What was going well specifically? Uh, communication. You know, uh, when we struggled on offense, it's been communication up front uh, to the rest of the guys. So uh, that was probably the biggest thing. You know, their defense uh, threw a lot of weird things at us. Uh, I mean, they line up everywhere and kind of move. We did a great job of communicating and uh, everybody executed. Still maybe not the caliber defense that you're used to seeing in the SEC. So when you have an opponent like this, how do you gauge the progress of the offense? Moving the ball. Uh, I mean, not hurting ourselves. And we did a, you know, a really good job of that in the first half. Uh, didn't hurt ourselves too much and, and progressively got better um, as the game went on. Coach Saban told us he really wanted to see more consistency from Alabama. They started it last week. You go against Ole Miss. How'd you all do today? Felt good. Uh, you know, it was a good win for us. Um, you know, it's not about who we play, it's how we play. So uh, we've been preaching that a bunch, and uh, it felt like the guys came out and did their job today. Thanks, AJ. Yes, ma'am. SEC games as we move along in the day include Georgia at Tennessee. That game gets going about 10 minutes from now. Ole Miss on the road as well. Florida at home against Arkansas. LSU goes to Starkville. Uh, South Carolina at home. Missouri at Vanderbilt. A battle uh, of James Franklin's there. Quarterback versus head coach. The Paul Feinbaum's take now on this game and what it means for Ole Miss at all. And this Ole Miss game is really critical because Ole Miss uh, was a major disappointment last week in Tuscaloosa. So much was expected. Uh, all the national media said it could be a close game. They go to the fourth quarter. Even my, my buddy Desmond Howard boldly predicted Ole Miss will win the game. And they played so poorly and were shut down and, and left so many points at the goal line. But I think Hugh Freeze has a lot to overcome tonight and a lot to accomplish. Meanwhile, Auburn has had a nice season. Uh, they've stolen a game or two. They're, they're having a nice run. They were exposed a little bit. At LSU, and with a home crowd, and it's one of the best home crowds in college football at Jordan Hare Stadium. I think they'll make this interesting, but in the end, I think Ole Miss wins this game. They're looking ahead to AM next week, and they want a big push uh, at the Grove when Johnny Manziel shows up. Well, they're going to need a big game and probably plenty of offense from Bo Wallace here. What do you expect to see? I expect to see high flying offense. Bo Wallace leads this spread concept, chunk play, explosive option-based offense, and Hugh Freeze is, is, is good friends with Gus Malzahn, so they're, they're very similar in their offensive approach. A lot of the chunk plays that fuel both these offenses. Yeah, these were the last two head coaches at Arkansas State. And you look at Auburn, not that dissimilar, right? I mean, he's not, these two offenses are somewhat similar. Same offensive system, but more than anything, you know, you have to see which team is going to play defense. That's really the key tonight coming into this game is which team is going to show up and stop the other explosive offense from scoring. But more than anything, this is a notch-up game, Dari. This is one of those matchups that everyone's playing to see who's going to take that fourth spot in the SEC West. I know you're talking like fourth spot in the SEC West. Yeah, that would West. be the exact middle <laughs> spot in the division. But not a bad place to be when you're considering the nation's best football conference and you're considering that the first three spots are taken already by Texas A&M. Alabama and LSU. You said there's no wiggle room there in the top. No wiggle room. There. Really? Very, very, very right. little in there. We'll see right. at the end of no, the you're season. You're probably right. I'm trying to figure out where you have wiggle room, and if it's not Ole Miss, you're probably right. Okay. All right, let's go Florida. They're at home tonight uh, against Arkansas. Arkansas is going to try to run the ball. You've got to figure, but that's difficult to do against Florida. Florida offensively still trying to figure things out with Tyler Murphy getting ready to make his second start. Well, the good thing about Florida right now is they're not hurting themselves by having, having Tyler Murphy in the ball game. He's done a good, pretty good job coming in for Jeff Driscoll, injured out for the season, but he's picked up where Jeff Driscoll was left off. He's still running the same plays, but he has the arm strength to make all the throws within the offense, and he is a spread concept running quarterback by trade. So Tyler Murphy's done a good job so far, but we just don't know where Florida stacks up to last. Now 
taking care of things at home is just a tap away. Introducing AT&T Digital Life. Personalized home security and automation that lets you be closer to home. So cool. Get $100 in instant savings when you order Digital Life Smart Security. Limited availability in select markets. Are you settling for the same old, same old? Or are you making it the original with Pizza Hut's $10 ready pizza deal? Any pizza, any size, any toppings. Delivery, dine-in, or carry-out. Just ask for or use promo code 10 n We all have a choice. Make it great. on the rest of the schedule. Uh, it was a, a short game today in Tuscaloosa. Less than three hours of playing time. Alabama, a 45-3 win uh, over Georgia State. Andre Ware, of course, was on the call there with Dave Neal. Andre, now, what, uh, what was the difference in this one? The difference in this one, just too much class by Alabama. A.J. McCarron made a quick day's work, 15 of 16 for 166 yards and four touchdowns. That was all in the first half of this one. A lot of running backs played in this one. A lot of young players got an opportunity to play as Alabama moves to 5-0. and They'll get back in conference play next week at Kentucky against the Wildcats, trying to move on to a, closer to a national championship run. All right, Andre, thank you. Elsewhere, there's a show being put on. In fact, the show is now over. Curtis closed. Bow, Jameis Winston. You deserve it. 
Break 24 right now. Uh, it is a little awkward being on the market again. Play clock, it's down to 10. That's smart. Second down and five. They keep up the ground with Jeremy Smith. And Smith moves the pile within about two yards of the first down, and that will keep the clock rolling as we will go inside of... Bob Stoops, just four wins behind Barry Switzer for the all-time lead in Oklahoma history. Today, he hunts his 154th W as Sooners head coach. Earlier in the day, coach joined the Ford Fox Saturday pregame show. Blake Bell has come in and really solidified you guys offensively. A lot of people thought he was going to be the starter coming into the season, but he takes the reins now a few games in. How impressed have you been with how Blake has really taken command of your offense? Um, I'm really excited about the way Blake's playing. He has, he has played sensational in, in two games. Fine Chinese restaurant. That's awesome. I know. Voice activated and great gas mileage. So much better than choosing voice activated or great gas mileage. <laughs> Be like eating sweet or sour chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 What is this? Sour chicken. That's good, right? That'd be awful. I think I like and better. <laughs> and is better. The 2014 Focus. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. Go further. <laughs> Retirement solutions from New York Life can help you keep... Great defensive tackles. And those guys... They have always been men up there. You've always had great defensive tackles like Tommy Harris. So that's what they were in a year ago. Now, what that did against the spread offense is force the second level to play in man coverage to spread out with these new evolving spread offenses. Welcome back to Stillwater. Are the fans of the Cowboys trying to urge their team to a back-and-forth victory? We have had seven lead changes between Kansas State and Oklahoma State. Bob Wachusen here with Rod Gilmore and Quinn Kisnick. It's been a terrific back-and-forth affair. And Oklahoma State has used the turnover battle to win in the past. 40-5 and five under Mike Gundy when they're plus in turnovers and they're plus today. If you're Kansas State defensively, what do you expect, Bob? You're expecting, I would think, a run to the left yep. to try and center up the field goal kicker if you don't get the first down. Let's see where it goes. And instead, heading to the right is Walsh. And he has stood up, and now, two timeouts remaining, Bill Snyder spins one. Dante Barnett didn't get fooled. He stayed home on the backside and was there to bring down J.W. Walsh. Well, and this makes things tougher. He's going to come out and head this way. Watch all the pressure that comes out anticipating this. We assume they would try and make sure they got back to the middle of the field in case they didn't pick up the first down to have an easier field goal. Now this is a more difficult one from the far hash. Well, on that replay, you could see the entire defensive front for Kansas State slid yep. to the right, yep. thinking that was where the running play might go. But a good job by Barnett to hold the edge on the backside. Uh, that's just what they're expecting us to do. So we'll do what they don't expect us to do. So now Grogan, and we saw earlier, Mike Gundy tried to take an intentional delay of game penalty in this type of a situation to back Grogan up to give him a better angle. Now it looks like from 28 yards, they're set to kick it away. And a kick six earlier for K-State. So now Kansas State, with still a lot of time left, has to have a touchdown. As we take a look at today's good hands play, brought to you by Ball State, and a trick play for Oklahoma State back in the first half. Trickeration. Walsh, Smith, getting it out to Seals. Seals comes up with a good catch when the ball was underthrown, and that set up an Oklahoma State touchdown. That was... Indiana with their first win over Penn State in school history. Teddy Bridgewater in Philly to take on Temple, and Teddy would get things rolling early, rolling right. Gerald 
Chris Bridge over the purple border. So wait, do you, you prep with Simon Garfunkel as well? <laughs> Later in the first, Bridgewater lobs it up. Devontae Parker brings it in and then comes down hard on that shoulder. This could be a big injury going forward. Yeah, because he's one of those athletic guys on the outside. He doesn't get a lot of national cover. He's a guy that Teddy Bridgewater relies on down the field. But didn't matter on this day. Bridgewater, another sensational performance. Louisville cruises. 30 to 7. 348 yards, two touchdowns for Teddy. Nothing but conference games left for the man on the right, Gary Patterson and TCU. The Horn Frog, they rallied to roll SMU last weekend. What can they do in Norman today? <laughs> Amco's been known as the transmission expert. My car goes, band adjustment, simple fix. Car's giving me a, uh, car's giving me a. Over the years, a lot has changed. Field. They were still jockeying people on. I think Leonard Floyd did not get out there. And you can see Mark Rick at the top of the heat calls timeout clearly before the snap. No doubt about it. Well, it has been a miserable half a decade if you're a volunteer fan. And Mark Richt is uh, arguing with Tom Ritter. Well, he's also saying, was the spot reviewable? Because I think it was farther back, is what Mark Rick is saying. Was that spot reviewed? Is it? See, the ball, I thought, was about a half a yard short the whole time. And Mark is saying, you know, inches are important here. Now, again, I don't know if there's enough conclusive evidence from 100 yards away to change the call, but Mark wanted to take a timeout and just at least examine it. Three in a row to Georgia. 18 in a row to ranked teams. Fourth and... I bet you Floyd is going to come up here for the back this time. No matter what. Man, a great play. Yes. Garrison Smith. Yeah, Garrison Smith got penetration on the play. At 169, a career high last week against South Alabama. Kiss is fired up. Don't miss the keys to the game. Watch live tailgate Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Team Oklahoma geared up for what they hope will be a breakout game offensively. Bob Stoops alluded to it earlier this week saying, we got to start clicking. we got to start putting up some big points. Well, today be that day. Fox Sports has brought you an interactive fan experience to campuses throughout the season. Make sure to join us each week at a different stop with the Fox College Saturday Tour presented and driven by the Ford F-150 built for itself. Tour is on the road next week in Manhattan, Kansas with Baylor and Kansas State. And congrats to Ford. The Ford F-Series truck has been the best-selling truck in the U.S. for 36 consecutive years.